boy, I knew that this was going to happen again. I just thought that, you know, more than a week would pass before the next attack, but the Arch user repository has been hit by yet another malware campaign. This time, a malicious package called Google Chrome Stable was uploaded to the AUR with the clear intention of infecting Arch users' machines. And this is not the last time it's going to happen. This will keep happening again and again. Not just as the popularity of Arch derivatives grow, but as the popularity of desktop Linux in general grows, as the user base swells without the amount of package vetting and due diligence growing along with them. Now, if you're a longtime AUR user that just clicked on this video because you want to learn how to identify malware in the AUR, go ahead and skip to that section. Hopefully, I remember to put a timestamp in the description of this video. But I'm willing to teach the noobs the basics about the AUR first if they're willing to learn. So the AUR is a repository of packages that are maintained by Arch users. And in my opinion, it's the single greatest thing about Arch Linux derivatives because there's far too many software packages out there for the Arch developers to maintain in the main repos themselves. And so they basically delegate all of that maintenance and security auditing for these packages to the entire community. And 99.99% .99 of the time, it works great. And it is a great testament to what a free software community can be. But obviously, there are bad actors. There's black hat hackers and, you know, they're essentially predators. They're opportunists, especially the script kitties that create malware like this that go for low hanging fruit like these community repos. But despite how low the fruit is clearly hanging, it's just becoming juicier and juicier as the user base grows. And the opportunity for these skids to steal personal data or install ransomware grows with each new AUR user who remains ignorant of how the AUR actually works. So when you're downloading packages from the AUR, what you're really downloading is a script that automatically installs the desired piece of software that you want. And this is actually pretty similar to how other package managers work. The key differences are that, uh, well, one, of course, the vetting. There's no central authority that's checking that these scripts are installing all the necessary dependencies or that they're installing the most up-to-date version of a package or that the package is going to work with the kernel version drivers and other software that's installed on your system. And if you look at the comments on popular AUR packages, you'll oftentimes see people reporting these kinds of issues, just, you know, simple build scripts are failing because something updated, and then they want the package maintainer of that script to fix it. Now, the source code of the packages is also not being fetched from a server that is controlled by the distro maintainers either. With the AUR, most of the source code is probably being pulled from GitHub. Uh, now, the big convenience factor that you're getting here with using the AUR, especially when you combine it with an AUR helper like Yay, is being able to resolve dependencies and update your packages much easier because otherwise you'd have to manually do all of that package maintenance yourself and, well, you might as well just download stuff from GitHub if you're going to do that. So the AUR is amazingly convenient, but you need to know how to actually vet the security of the packages that are installed there. And the process starts with first inspecting the PKG build file. When you look up a package in the AUR, there's a link to view this build script right here under package action. So go ahead and click on view package build. And this is going to show you the script that's actually going to run on your system in order to install the package. Now, don't get intimidated by this if you're not a programmer, because the main thing we really need to look at is inside of this source equals block here or where it says source. So this is actually where it's going to be downloading the binary or the source code to compile the package from. So here we can clearly see that there's a GitHub link. So why don't we just go ahead and open this in a new tab. And we can see that this is actually going to the official uh, GitHub page for Brave. We can even click here and see, boom, official GitHub page for Brave. So it's pretty safe to say that this is actually going to install the Brave browser, or in this case, the Brave browser binary uh, on your system when you go ahead and run it from the AUR. We can do the same thing with the Exodus wallet. So we'll click on view package build, and then we see we have our source block right here. And 
it's actually pulling it directly from exodus.com apparently. So we'll just go ahead and open that in a new tab. And sure enough, this is exodus.com. We could even go so far as to check the certificate if we're really not sure, because this is a crypto wallet after all. And sure enough, it is really being pulled from exodus.com. So it's pretty safe to assume that this is going to install the legitimate Exodus wallet on your system. And while you're looking at this build script, it's also a good idea to just look through it and make sure that nothing else funky is going on, like a command that's gonna delete your home folder or your root partition. And you know, you really should never run a shell script on your system, especially with root privileges, which the installer is going to ask for without verifying what the shell script is actually going to do. And I know some of you who are maybe fresh to using Linux, especially if you're coming from Windows, are thinking, oh, I don't want to learn how to code. I don't want to learn shell scripting. I just want to be able to use my computer. And well, I mean, shell scripting would be worth you learning, okay? I mean, you don't necessarily have to learn it in order to use Linux, but it has its uses. I mean, for one, it's going to be much easier for you to vet packages in the AUR. And like I said, the AUR has so many packages in it, and it's just so convenient to install stuff from here. Um, but also, if you learn shell scripting, you'll find that you can automate a lot of things on your Linux system because that's how everything is done. Everything is done through the shell. And then if you really can make it through the painful process of learning this stuff, then you'll find that your experience on Linux is gonna be a whole lot better. And it's also important to vet these scripts whenever you're updating packages that you have already installed. I mean, right now, the attacks that have happened against the AUR have been pretty simple and easy to identify. In fact, the first one, I think the reason it got called out is because the guy was trying to promote it on Reddit and, you know, it was really sus because, I mean, his Reddit account was sus, his uh, account in the AUR was also new. I think in this latest campaign, there were also a bunch of upvotes by SOC accounts. So there's a lot of really sussy stuff as far as the attempts to do social engineering are concerned, but these types of hacking campaigns could easily get more sophisticated. People could maybe even start taking over the accounts of others who are maintaining legitimate packages in the AUR and then push malware to the scripts whenever a new package version comes out. So I really hope that especially everyone who is contributing to packages here in the AUR is making sure that their accounts are secure, especially because you're gonna see a lot of the same people over and over again in the AUR. I mean, I haven't actually really gone through and written down who the maintainers of all these different packages are, but I know that you see the same names a whole lot. And if one of their accounts were to get hacked, it would be really, really devastating for Arch Linux. Now let's take a look at the malicious Google Chrome stable package build that was uploaded to the AUR. Immediately, you can tell that the format of this script is very different than the other ones that we looked at. Uh, we don't have that very nice source equals code block to tell us where our source of the package is actually coming from. Now, I don't know if that formatting is actually required by the AUR. I mean, I guess technically it's not because this code was able to get pushed to the AUR. And, you know, maybe that's something that could be added in the future. Maybe add requirements for AUR packages to uh, potentially vet out malware. But also, if somebody creates a build script in the AUR that's just really crappy, really hard to read, you know, it's extra verbose for no reason, then that's probably not something that should be there either. So maybe a good idea to automate some of that vetting in some way. Um, but anyway, it is a uh, best practice to at least have a script that looks more like this because it makes that vetting process easier for the end user. There's also no shawsums in here to make sure that the package we want to download actually downloaded correctly. You see that we have these here with the um, Exodus example and we also have it with the Brave example. So again, I don't know if that's um, actually a strict requirement in the AUR, probably should be, and we could probably also automate that process to make sure that nobody is putting packages in there uh, without it. There's also no license variable in here to tell us whether the package is GPL, MIT, or something else. Again, probably something that should be required, but the real smoking gun here is that the software 
for uh, Google Chrome Stable is getting pulled from segs.lol, which is some kind of file upload service for memers and apparently hackers, definitely not a legitimate source for software that is made by Google. And this is all really not that different from searching for the name of some software that you want to use on the internet and then downloading an exe for the first result that Google gives you without doing any additional vetting of the source of that exe before you go ahead and run it. So yeah, don't approach package management on your own system in the same way that we've been roasting Windows users for years for. A lot of people are leaving the Microsoft plantation for the free pastures of GNU Linux, something that I obviously encourage, but we don't want the window user mentality and the problems that are attached to it to come over to these greener pastures with them. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm and check out my online store, base.win, where you can buy my awesome merch like this open base t-shirt that I'm wearing right now, accessories for your phone or laptop, or you could even buy refurbished computers from base.win, like this Dell Latitude that was refurbished by Sir Sudo. And you can even see the video of him doing it. So it's not just a refurbished laptop, it's a verifiably refurbished laptop. And as always, the 10% discount applies store-wide, even to the laptop, when you pay with Monero XMR at checkout. Have a great rest of your day.